Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. This week, Mailbag Summer Edition. But before we get to some letters and emails, a scene from the President's Week. On Friday, President Obama welcomed newly confirmed Supreme Court Justice Elena Kagan to the White House. Kagan, who earned bipartisan support in the Senate, will be just the fourth woman to serve on the Supreme Court. Before hosting an event in the East Room for her, the two met in the Oval Office where the President signed her official paperwork. Wow. Go. How about that? That's, not, uh, you know, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Absolutely. How do you feel? Does it hit you? Um, not, not yet. I don't think it will. How long would it take you? Um, Our first letter comes from Jonathan Talcott in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it too deals with official paperwork. Jonathan asks, does the president receive stamps in his passport when he travels? To find out, we started with the president's personal secretary, Katie Johnson. The president does indeed have a passport. In fact, one of my first jobs when I got here was to fill out the president's application for his new passport after he became president. And in the application form, there's a box that says occupation. And for the president, I got to put president of the United States, which took up more than the entire box. Where is it kept? His passport is under the safekeeping of our advanced staff over in the Eisenhower Executive Office Building. Hey, Jonathan, we're in the White House Scheduling Advance Office where we actually keep the President's passport in our safe here along with all of the other White House staff passports. So uh, I'll open it up and uh, show you the President's passport. So here's our safe. We keep the President's passport and the file marked POTUS passports. So here's the cover page. The President's signature is on it. And yes, he gets custom stamps just like everybody else does. So this is the back page of the president's passport, the endorsements page. If you zoom in, you'll find out that the bearer of this passport is the president of the United States. Our next letter is from Jim Bartell in Palm Desert, California. Jim writes, I would like to know when someone like me who is 60 years of age and has a pre-existing condition needs two hips replaced. And having paid health insurance all my adult life with the exception of the last four years, will be able to get insurance. I cannot get health insurance now because of the hips without paying around $1,000 a month, which is out of reach for me. To find out the answer to the question, we asked a genuine authority on the subject, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Kathleen Sebelius. Jim, thank you so much for your letter to the president. You've just described a situation that millions of Americans find themselves in, where they have a pre-existing condition and they get priced out of the insurance market. The good news is that the Affordable Care Act does bring some relief to your situation. Step one is that every state in the country will have a pre-existing condition pool set up and running by August of this year, in 2010. Uh, the second option is this year, rules will change for private insurance companies, so they can no longer limit the amount of uh, yearly payments that they make to uh, benefit someone who has a pre-existing condition. And they can't put an annual cap on treatments that you receive. A lot of people who have cancer or have an illness find themselves paying their monthly premiums only to run out of money when they need it the most. Uh, but the big news is in the Affordable Care Act that by 2014, there will be a new insurance market where every American, regardless of a pre-existing condition or not, will have an option for affordable health coverage, be able to shop in a new pool, have some competitive plans, and no longer will insurance companies be able to limit adults with pre-existing condition from the treatments or the policies that they need. Thank you for your support and Edie's support for the President's program moving forward. We're doing our best to implement it as quickly as we can and hope that this answers your question. Our final letter comes from Robert Reed in Rochester, Washington. He has two questions. I've watched you sign important papers and then hand out the pens to politicians. I was wondering if you ever give pens to ordinary citizens, and if so, if I could have one. As with all matters paper and pen related, we need to check in with the White House Staff Secretary, Lisa Brown. Robert, thanks so much for writing. As you noted, the president regularly gives pens to members of Congress who obviously have done a huge amount of work to get a bill passed. In addition, he often gives pens to individual Americans who have been either deeply affected by an issue or have worked really hard to get a particular piece of legislation passed. 
I'm not quite sure when it started. We know that um, President Kennedy and President Johnson um, each used a number of pens when they were when they signed bills, and the clerk believes that it started um, with either Truman or Roosevelt. He has gotten much better at this. He, in fact, jokes about this. Actually, um, that he's you know, at the beginning, it was just not. Um, come naturally to use a number of pens when you're signing your name, and so. But he has now gotten very much in the groove. I've got to go to this. <laughs> Robert, I can't promise to give you a pen from the next bill that the president signs, but if you work really hard on something that you are particularly passionate about, and a piece of legislation is the result, I will do my best to see that you get one. Thanks so much for joining us for Mailbag Summer Edition. For links, transcripts, and videos of the president's activities this week, go to WhiteHouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing week. Let's see. Hmm. I just want to make sure it reads correctly. Salt and water. Did we spell your name properly? Uh, yes, I believe you did. Uh, that would be embarrassing, wouldn't it? Right.